While so many people have hailed the Supreme Court's judgment granting financial autonomy to the 774 local government areas of the country, and they say it's victory for democracy, they have also raised many interesting talking points over the last few days. Many have said, apart from ensuring that local councils get their federal allocations directly, the funds must be prudently managed and made to benefit people at the grassroots. Some have also asked the um, anti-graft agencies to be on their toes to avert new emperors emerging in the councils via looting of funds. So let's have conversations around implementing the Supreme Court judgments. Don't forget that. There are, there are mixed reactions, actually. On the one hand, there are those who are hailing it. On the other hand, there are those who are saying that the Constitution has been violated by the Supreme Court. How that's possible, I don't know. But let's have conversations about the implementing, not the legal, legalese, which will still continue, but about implementing the Supreme Court judgment because the Supreme Court judgment says it is with immediate effect. For now, we have two gentlemen join us. Um, David Ogu, former local government chairman, Ibaji local government um, area in Kogi State, joins us uh, in our Abuja studio. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Mr. Amba. Mr. Ogu. Okay. Thank you, Ayo. Yeah, Thank we you. are Good also going to have uh, two other gentlemen join us uh, this morning. But when they do, I'll definitely let you know. Okay, I understand that Comrade Titus Audu is with us. He's the National President, Nigeria Union of Teachers. He's also Deputy President, Nigeria Labor Congress. He joins us virtually this morning. Good morning, Mr. Uh, Mr. Audu. Okay, we'll have, we'll join, he'll join us shortly. Well, Mr. Audu, let's begin with you straight away. First of all, Give us a background. What do local government, what have local government chairmen or local government administrations, what have they had to contend with in the past before the Supreme Court judgment? And what are you looking up to? What are you looking forward to? How hopeful are you that this judgment is going to make any significant difference? Thank you. Prior to this, permit me to begin with the fact that um, the concept of um, federalism and federating units never envisaged that any arm of government, any segment, any tire of government, will be caged by another, another tire. That is why the state governments never allow the federal government to use up their powers, especially in their autonomy, to manage their affairs and the allocations and resources that are created to them. So it is quite a um, surprise to me, and it's worrisome, that state government delighted in holding down local government and doing on to local councils what they never wanted the federal government to do to them. And so the local governments have been contending with the situation that they had powers bequeathed to them or somebody had held those powers behind. There are authorities and influence bequeathed to them. There are expectations in governance at the grassroots level. People expected that at that level, local council chairmen and the authorities at that level were saddled with the management of the resources and the development aspect of their communities and the various entities. But in a circumstance that they were um, restrained by government at the, local, at the state level made it a situation that looked like someone being given, uh, given the horse, yet you are holding the string. How does the horse progress to achieve purpose? And I have this simple analogy that is quite funny but quite explicit. At the local councils, chairmen and the councils were expected to go to their communities and deliver good governance, be available to their people, be avenues to assess health, security, well-being, good road, agricultural facilities as the case might be. 
And there they arrive their communities with a bus load of cartons of, of baggages and parcels, labeled security, health and all that. Inside these parcels are empty. And so when they arrive and they are being confronted with these things, what they find is that they are or they have authorities by name or the influence and the abilities, the capacity to influence them never existed. So they are left at the mercy and vagrancies of the fact that they are vessels without capacities to exercise what they are supposed to do. Well, Mr. Ogu, just a grassroots point. development. My, my apologies, yes. if you if yes. you don't mind. Let, let yes. people yes. Let, let's have an understanding of the structure of a local government, um, a, a local government administration, a local government council. Um, the states, everybody knows, the state government has the executive headed by the, go the governor, yes. the legislature headed by the Speaker of the House of Assembly, and the judiciary by the, 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 uh, the, the, the chief judge in the state. Is there a similarity in that with the uh, local government administrations? There is a seeming, so to say, similarity in that structure. So to say because part of those segments are controlled by the state. There is a local government, a chairman, there is a legislative council, which is the legislature of the local government, but the judiciary is control, entirely controlled by the state structure. The local government does not have any influence on the judicial structures. Beyond that, the management of affairs at the local, at the local level are essentially controlled by the state government. For example, you will need to know this. There is a local government service commission at the state level, at, which manages the staff recruitment and human resource management affairs at the local council. The chairman of the council has no control over staff recruitment, over emolument, and whatever. A director of local government affairs, a DLG, is appointed from the state local government service commission, who is supposedly called the head of local government. And as such, the chairman who arrives at place is simply a figurehead. Then there is a ministry of local government where policies and guidelines are issued out. And so the chairman and his council, the legislative council, so to say, and the personnel of the local government are left under the control of that ministry. Movement, resource management, um, how to go about other facilities are essentially within the ambit of the local government ministries at the state level. So the chairman is simply all, comes to the place and as the adage the, goes, the state government is seen to be the one who, who pays the piper. And so they dictate the tone. Okay. The structure of the local government is such, yes. Go ahead. Land on that. The stru yes, the structure of the local government is such that the chairman and his council simply wait for instructions and direct it from the state government. And when the governor says go, you go. When the governor says sit, you sit. And of course, particularly when it comes to security, you have no control in what happens around the security. You go back cap in hand, appealing to the governor to talk to the commissioner of police to let certain level of security available to you. Beyond so, what is governance without financial resources? Okay. Your resources are entirely managed from that level. It, it's very so interesting. Luca government Mr. Chairman. Mr. Ogu, my apologies again. It, it's interesting because what we understand, anyway, let, yes. let me, we'll, we'll come to some other details. Comrade Audu has also joined us okay. in this conversation, as I mentioned earlier. He's the president, national president of the Nigeria Union of Teachers. Welcome, Comrade Audu. Good morning, and thank you for joining us again. Uh, I don't know what your thoughts are, um, first of all, about what will now change, what existed before now, and what will now change as a result of um, what we are talking about now, this Supreme Court judgment? Viewers, I want to uh, say good morning to all of us, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to also add my voice to the issue on board. Let me also join other well-meaning Nigerians to congratulate Nigerians and even uh, the federal government and everybody for this very Supreme Court uh, pronouncement or judgment where it has now 
uh, let me use the word liberated the local governments as it were uh, at this moment uh, we have received the news with gladness as far as we are concerned because this pronouncement will bring development uh, to the grassroots where uh, lot the, the populace uh, reside, are residing we uh, we believe that uh, that was that was how it were years back where local government were saddled with some responsibility uh, of managing the local government by way of uh, providing infrastructure uh, payment of salaries of both local government workers and teachers uh, construction of uh, maybe culvert and maybe construction of even some feeder routes uh, this will enable us to go back to those old days uh, that even the councillor can be uh, accounted for if he has not performed uh, in his uh, uh, local government. Not to talk of even the local government council chairman. This this uh, this pronouncement, uh, I assure us that we will bring a great development uh, closer to the people. Having said so, uh, we are having a mixed feeling, mixed feeling in the sense that uh, this issue may may all go well and it may not all go well based on the fact that payment of salaries, as it were now, uh, it was as a result of local government not being able to pay salaries of primary school teachers. And that was why uh, there was creation of this uh, universal basic education board and at the state level, state uh, primary, state uh, universal basic education board in each of the state who we are saddled with the administration, discipline, promotion, and even payment of a, a primary school teacher's salary. Uh, the, the payment of teachers, primary school teacher's salary uh, comes from the coffers of the local government council. It is the local government council that pays primary school teachers' salaries. And they normally deduct this money, send it to state's primary, uh, state uh, universal basic education board for onward payment to primary school teachers' salaries. So with this very uh, autonomy given to local government where it is said clearly that funds will be sent directly to the local government uh, council for them to expense it accordingly uh, we believe that uh, we wouldn't have any reason uh, to begin to to complain of non-payment of primary school teacher salary mm. because it is the responsibility of this local government council to pay such salary both primary school teachers and local government council workers we don't want situation whereby this uh, autonomy will be given and we as teachers will begin to shout and cry before salaries will be paid but that's one of the challenges also here. Uh, just, just a second. On yes. that particular issue, and thankfully a former local yeah. government chairman is on this panel um, with us. Perhaps the challenge yes. you know, to contend with here is the kind of communication that goes on. Uh, we have heard, I mean, he has also said something the other time that, you know, uh, and you may want to speak to that, that the staff, the recruitment of staff that work with the local government administrations are administered by the state that the recruitment process is administered by the states consequently the teachers are employed by the states is that sure. correct it is okay now because if, as i speak let, let, let me let me put it right as i speak uh local government don't have the 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 authority to recruit their teachers from grade level seven Grade level seven, it is assumed that it's a senior staff. Am I right? Local government are only saddled responsibility of recruiting workers from grade level one, if there are, uh, maybe to grade level six. But as a teacher, the minimum entry requirement is NC, and uh, it starts from grade level seven. So as I speak, the responsibility of recruitment is done by the state universal basic education at every at, at all level of the state at all all over the state is the state universal basic education that recruits then local government now pays there is one thing i want to put the perspective i want to correct you see what we are agitating for we are saying that uh, 
uh, we shouldn't be we shouldn't allow local government to completely take responsibility of payment of primary school teacher salary that has been our position we have been we all along we have been supporting this uh, uh, local government autonomy but what we are saying is that payment of primary school teacher salary should one either be hands off from the local government council or be deducted at source during FAC, be deducted as source and sent to all state universal basic uh, education board for on one payment uh, of teacher's salary. Well, Mr. Ogu, to just a fact, second. That, that is just one of several issues. And I would like uh, uh, Mr. Ogu to quickly respond to that. Mr. Ogu, do you want to speak to that? Yes, I do. I do because... Um, the aberration had been committed. First of all, I think the governors have to have to celebrate this development because what had been allegations and counter allegations that governors tamper with issues will now come to the light and to the forefront. It is clear and obvious that we had derailed from the process of governance of the issue of federation. You are aware, I am convinced that I have been employed by a local government education authority before. I have been employed by that system. The structures provide that each local government has a local, a local education authority mm. or local education board. Under a chairman and the structure that controls the recruitment and emolument of teachers under that control, it is then that control is close to grassroots. Payment of salaries won't be difficult when you have the staff under your control and the fund available evenly shared. It is this hijacking or interference from the federal level and state level as making it difficult for teachers to access fund. Ordinarily, I do not think UBIC is necessary or spare is necessary. When teachers are in a particular local government, they have their supervisors, they have the agency that oversees their recruitment and discipline. Payment within the fund that comes with the local government is available to them. And then control is essential. If you do not control or you are not the one who pays, you heard me say, he who pays the piper dictates the tone. A teacher that works under you and is paid from the state headquarters has no allegiance to you. You cannot control him. You cannot determine how he goes. You cannot assess him. What then is your control over the structure of education? If you are not the one who, who employs him, Recruitment is not in your hand, and you have no power to discipline or hire or fire, as the case might be. Mm. I think NUT have no reason to be afraid about payment. Perhaps the on the same been, issue. How do you even account for? My, my apologies. Yes. Perhaps on the same issue, uh, Mr. Ogu, um, you've, yes. and you've spoken, you've, yes. you've braced one of them, um, which is the issue of uh, uh, the State Universal Basic Education Board, or no, beg your pardon, the UBEC. Yes. which is a, an issue yes. of, uh, th that is controlled from the national body, the federal government. Then there is also the issue yes. of the PHC. The, the federal government has an agency the primary health commission. on the primary you yes. know, uh, health care and all care. of that. Now, yes. in implementing the Supreme Court judgment, which is supposed to be um, immediate, according to, to the Supreme Court, yes. what things have to change? in terms of uh, uh, agencies of government at the federal or state levels, in terms of, uh, you know, the things that are supposed to be primary to the, uh, to the local government administrations, because primary health is supposedly a, a local government affair or a local level affair. Uh, environmental uh, sanitation yes. is supposedly a local government affair. Now you're saying that even primary school education is something that the, the, the primary, the, the local government author, authorities should be able to do. So what are the things that have to change structurally in terms of soft infrastructure, agencies of government that have to change if this Supreme Court judgment is to make the right sense that it's supposed to make? Thank you. I must first of all differentiate between primary health care and basic education. Health is universal. You, don't, you do not need to get your local government headquarters to assess health, primary health. You can assess primary health care from anywhere. 
wherever it is. But basic education, the children and the facilities and the structures that offer education at the grassroots. And so the federal government having an agency, a federal a primary health care agency, is not an aberration. That is a duty that is concurrent. Health is concurrent at both the federal and then uh, at the state and local government levels. But for ed basic education, it is so regulated and restricted to grassroots development that you cannot scatter it and cannot be managed at the national level. When you have big offices and big officers and big structures at your back, how do they affect the local government and grassroots structures? What needs to change is this. I am aware, and it is obvious, everybody knows, there used to be an agency, a ministry, and I wish I were to advocate a new development here, a ministry of local government, a state and local government affairs in the past, under the control of the office of the vice president. It makes it easy to streamline structures. It can now become a commission or an agency under the office of the local or the pre vice president to oversee what happens between state and local government in such a manner that there is accountability, there is reporting, and there is monitoring and observation. Allow me to get to primary education, for example. The basic education structure at the grassroots level, managed by a local education board, will know exactly the needs and environmental circumstances that require will need, what needs to be placed or what not to be put in place at the local level for primary education. The man in Abuja, for example, does not know what happens in my village. If the teacher goes to work, if he's paid, if he's sick, the, the structure of the village has fallen down, he doesn't know he needs to go through the state structure to get at this level. But the closer you are to development, that is the, the issue. Now, here we are. What needs to change now is this. Revitalize the structures that control the three tiers of government. Create an avenue to monitor a commission that will look at what is happening at the state, a kind of an audit commission. One of the worrisome circumstances that people have raised of those who are in opposition is the jack situation. The jack account is supposed to be a transit account, for example. And what the state comes, brings in from internally generated revenue was supposed to be added what come from the federation account and transmitted directly to the local government without interference. Now, someone says deduct the phone from the source and keep somewhere. The teacher can refuse to go to work. The state government where the money is domiciled will pay him without knowing. I am aware of state government who had to begin to do screening to a certain teachers who are supposed to collect money from their locality but they live somewhere far away. And with this electronic transfer of funds, salaries are wired to them wherever they live without going to work. And the fellow who pays actually does not even have a tab as to whether the teacher goes to work or not, or if he's alive or not. But when it is at that basic level, the control is there, efficiency is there, monitoring is facilitated, and the process goes on. Your question is, what must happen to affect immediate trans uh, implementation of the process? You must begin to factionalize. And what do I call factionalize? To realize what happens and what should not happen. Immediately, as it stands, it is obvious that the three tiers of government have their autonomy. And of course, calling it autonomy is, I should, I should call it independence. It's not, you shouldn't just call it as if it's a great deal. It's independence. Each, each segment, each tier should be independent of the other. But there is a central control, like we will have in the circumstances, such a circumstance that there's an auditing process to know what happens here and there. I advocate that a new commission or rather what used to be the Ministry of State and Local Government Affairs be revitalized. Re the Algon as an organ managing who has management of local, former local government chairman, as a body should constitute themselves into a, 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 a group that should streamline such policies that are best suited for the, for the local government agencies. Mm -hmm. Norge, I am glad that Norge has been part of the process of this agitation because what the Senior Staff Association of Nigeria does and so they know what and what and the principles and the processes are put in place. Okay, all right. I also think that... Yeah, at, my, my at, apologies. Let, let me bring uh, Comrade Aldo back in because um, um, he may want okay. to respond to a thing or two that you said. Comrade, um, you have heard him and uh, do you th are your fears or the fears of teachers in any way allayed? Because, I mean, having, you know, understanding what is happening 
do you see any value in what you said that it is possible to pay someone who hasn't been going to work? Let me let me correct that. Let me let sorry. Let me correct that very impression. Maybe maybe he has been out of the system for a, quite a long time. But for him to say that there is that tendency that somebody could can be paid why he has not gone to work is not even there. At all, at all level, be it at the local government and even at the state, at the local government, as he rightly said, we have the local government education authority, who also are saddled with the responsibility of supervising and checkmating. There are inspectors even at that very local, at that very level, and at the state level, we are the, the, we have uh, various uh, state university based education board. We have what we call the quality assurance department that even exists even at the local government education authority where they go around to make sure that teachers are in their respective schools and respective classes day in day out let me tell you categorically gone are those days that uh, teachers will remain in the where somewhere and they will not be they will not be in their classroom and they will comrade teach. you you there may are, you are, may you, you, you do have a, just, a second, saying, just a second comrade, just a second comrade just a second you there is value in what you're saying but you cannot also yeah. say you know you cannot also completely brush out everything that he said because even at the no, no, no. of kogi state we've also had the uh national president of the Nigeria Union of Teachers and deputy president, national Nigeria Labor Congress. He's also a board me meeting education international, uh, a board member of the Education International EI Africa region, comrade Audu Titus Amba. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Well, another conversation that has been making the rounds is the issue of corruption. The, yeah, but maybe we'll talk about late, that later. How about we talk about something that concerns you and helps you save money? CNG. We'll be right back. <laughs>